Hey everybody, John the other here, obviously. And I'm revisiting a topic I've talked about before, that is how to survive a false accusation of sexual assault. And I'm going to break it down as rules. Uh, the rules to follow uh, to survive a false accusation of sexual assault. Rule number one, cut off contact with your accuser. This is actually much more important than people think. Uh, a lot of people think they can talk it out. They think, oh, it's just a misunderstanding. Uh, this person has been so close to me for so long. We can patch this up. Oh, I'm sure they didn't mean to say those things. I'm sure that was just a fit of emotion. Everybody who takes that approach is wrong. And it's a fatal error that they're making. So number one, rule number one is cut off contact with your accuser. That means no phone calls, no emails, no text messages, no responding to their attempts to call you or to text you. And if they show up somewhere where you are, you leave. You leave without saying boo to them. Rule number one is important. Cut off contact with your accuser. Rule number two, cut off contact with your accuser. This is really serious. People fall down here. This is where their lives go horribly wrong. And that means your family, the people supporting you, also have to cut off that person. You can't have your mom letting your accuser come and sniff around your room. Rule number three, don't apologize. Even if you feel sorry for what happened, do not, under any circumstances, say, I'm sorry. Don't say you feel bad. Don't say anything that can be seen as conciliatory because that will be reinterpreted, not even necessarily by your accuser, but by the whole wider world in front of whom you are accused as your admission of guilt. So no apologies, no, nothing even the shape or the smell of an apology. Rule number four, how to survive a sexual assault accusation that is false. Cut off contact with your accuser's collaborators. Your accuser, especially in the post me Too world, is going to be absolutely surrounded by mindless you-go-girl fangirls, cheering her on, telling her she's uh, stunning and brave, that she deserves better, blah, 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 blah. Anybody supporting your accuser, anybody supporting me too, needs to be cut brutally and immediately from your life when you are the victim of a false accusation. Rule number five, measure your friends, measure your relatives. The ones who don't have your back, the ones who are shilly-shallying, the ones who are in doubt about whether or not you're a good guy or a bad guy, they're gone. Get rid of them. The people around you are the ones who are going to help you survive, and your survival is, in fact, at stake here, in a very real sense. Rule number six, if the accusation was precipitated by a known event such as a fight or a breakup, get a written statement from every person who was witness to that event. One and a half pages, two pages, don't have them check with each other to make sure that they're, you know, lining up. You're going to have people who saw the same thing telling different stories. That's normal. But you want to do this as soon as you possibly can. The reason for that is that memory is very flexible. Every time you recount a memory, every time you remember something, you actually edit it. So even though repeated rememberings of a single event makes the memory stronger and stronger, it also edits it. So each time the memory is altered. That's why you want to write it down as fast as possible uh, immediately after the event that you're recording. So rule number eight, you write your own recounting of that event, also keeping your opinion out. So if somebody said something that you don't agree with, you don't say that. You just write only the facts, ma'am, in your accounting. Rule number, what are we at, nine? Rule number nine is buy a new phone. You're going to back up your old phone. You're going to back up all the text messages. You're going to back up all your social media. You're going to back up your emails and everything. You're going to put it all on thumb drive. You're going to make sure that you have all the digital paper trail, but you also want to buy a new phone. This serves two purposes. Number one is uh, you want to preserve your old phone because all the stuff on it, even after you back it up, it's really important to your case if you end up in court. Number two, changing your number and changing your phone is one of the ways you stop your accuser from getting back in contact with you. Remember rule, rule one, rule two, you cut off contact with your accuser? Changing your phone is a big way of doing that. Uh, rule number nine, this is not necessarily a rule, it's a guide, it's a survival guide in event of a false accusation. You're gonna be in extreme emotional turmoil, so make sure that you continue to sleep 
at a regular time each day. Make sure you maintain as much of your regular schedule as you can because if you become cut off from the routine elements of your life, um, that is how people fall off the grid of their own lives and they become homeless and suicidal. And a false accusation kills people by them killing themselves. Uh, this is not a joke. Your routine, even in a false accusation situation, is very important. Your sleep schedule, that you eat regularly, that if you work out, you keep working out. Now the final rule is, you're going to uh, make an accounting of the accusation, and the accusation is going to be non-linear. It's going to be delivered to you in chunks, it's going to filter through social media, phone calls, text messages, all kinds of chatter. You want to record all of that, and you want to keep a log, keep it in a linear order. Because if it's a false accusation, and that's what we're talking about here, false accusations are never made in a coherent, linear way. They're always made fragmentarily. They're made out of the linear order that they supposedly occurred in. And liars reveal themselves. So the inconsistencies, the contradictions in that, you want to get it all into one place in its linear timeline as it should be, as it is supposedly being recounted. That document, which is going to be very, very painful for you to put together because it's a story about you from a person who was very close to you saying the most terrible things about you that you can imagine, but that document in its internal illogic, in its internal contradictions, that is going to be your strongest evidence of your innocence to get your life back on track. So I want to say thanks to everybody who's helping support this channel through Patreon and PayPal donations. There's links to that in the low bar. Uh, thank you very much for watching or listening, as the case may be. And as always, have a lovely, lovely day.